Hi, this is Alan Kuvorkov, and this is a follow-up video to uh, Skill Crane 101. Um, that is my first video about claw machines. Um, if you have any interest in them, I would suggest that you uh, check out my first video where I explained different kinds of claw machines, um, different kinds of mechanisms, and offer a few different uh, tips on how to play them. Since that video, I um, got my hands on a different machine, uh, which is um, actually quite a bit older, and it's about as old as I am. Um, Look at that 30 year old dumbass playing with claw machines. Oh, shut up, let him do his thing. Thank you. I was quite uh, surprised because when I first set it up, uh, I put on a couple of heavy things and I kept winning every time. So it made me wonder um, because the claw is not adjustable at all. Uh, so it made me wonder how it was used in an arcade in a profitable fashion because it kept winning every time. So um, after I completely set it up, I filled it up with uh, gravel, um, put in a bunch of uh, things in it, and then it changed quite a bit. I was I started having trouble winning stuff, and it got me really uh, curious because I I wasn't sure what it, what was different at that point. Um, so I started playing more and more, and eventually I uh, figured it out. Um, it's a different kind of machine. Um, pretty old and it's um, a floor floor model basically the stuff uh, all the prizes are laying on the floor and um, you're standing all over the machine and the the main difference um, is that um, you, ha you have two buttons and you can only go forward once and sideways once and that's it uh, so most of the newer machines have joysticks which make make things a little bit easier but they also have computerized uh, uh, systems where that change the claw strength and all that stuff which I explained in the previous uh, video so I just wanted to show you um, this machine and because they're still um, in, in use in a lot of the arcades Atlantic City and a bunch of other places so I um, just want to explain how, the, how this one works and hopefully you'll find it useful so here it is uh, this is called Lucky Crane it was made in Japan in the late 70's um, operation is pretty simple. You just basically drop a quarter in here. Uh, this button makes it go straight. This button makes it go sideways. Once you release this button, the claw drops, and if you happen to win something, it'll be here in the prize chute. Um, as you can see, there's a prize in there already. This is the prize chute on the other side, and the claw right above it in the home position. And here are the prizes. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the claw is not adjustable. Uh, it has a very, very simple system of keeping the prizes in the game. Um, I'm going to pick the lightest object, which is probably this uh, miniature jigsaw puzzle. Um, it's basically paper, um, so I'm going to play and see if we can win this thing. Let's deposit a coin. Now we go forward. And sideways. Now as you can see this was a pretty light object but still um, the claw was not able to grab it. Now we're going to try something different. Uh, this is a wooden box and it has marbles inside so you can pull them out and play tic-tac-toe on the top surface. This is obviously quite a bit heavier so we'll give it a shot and see how it works out. Now you're probably wondering why I couldn't win the light box but I was able to win the heavy tic-tac-toe box even though the claw was bouncing all over the place. So let me explain. There's actually a pretty simple trick to this. Uh, on most newer cranes, when the claw drops and touches the floor or the prize, the tension in the string on which the claw hangs starts to loosen and that triggers the reversal of the motor and the claw starts to go back up. On this crane, the claw starts to go back up when this gear makes a full circle. Since the lobe triggers the switch, that means the claw can only go down to a certain point. The reason I was unable to retrieve the lighter box 
is because it was lower than the lowest point that the claw can drop. So when the, the claw closes, it's unable to get a good grip under the prize. Now the heavier box was sitting higher, so I had absolutely no trouble picking that up. Most of the newer jewelry cranes uh, still use gravel on the play field, but it doesn't really serve much of a purpose anymore. Now these older cranes that did not have adjustable claws, they relied heavily on the level of the gravel because that determined whether you could win any of the prizes. Crane operators could place the more valuable items lower in the play field, actually inset into the gravel, to ensure that they're not as easily won. All standard claws in arcade cranes are operated by a coil which is inside the claw. When power is sent to the coil, it allows the claw to open and close, and that's how the operators can set different settings so that most of the time the claw is weak, and sometimes the claw is strong to allow you to win something. That is provided that you can position the claw properly over the prize that you're trying to win. As I mentioned in a previous video, a lot of the older machines lack the modern technology and do not offer a way of adjusting the claw's strength. However, many experienced operators can easily install a rheostat, which would allow them to change the amount of power that is sent to the claw, and this way they can control which prizes can be won and which ones can be difficult or impossible to win. An interesting thing about this particular machine is that unlike the cranes that I mentioned in the previous video, this one offers absolutely no way of controlling the claw strength, even with a rheostat. The reason for that is that closing of the claw is controlled by gravity as opposed to electricity. It's a pretty low-tech system, but it actually works. What happens is that when the claw is ready to drop, the power is sent to the coil to open the claw, but when it reaches the bottom, the power is cut, and the claw closes under its own weight. It carries the prize back to the prize chute, with absolutely no power supplied, which means that the operators have no control over how strong the claw is. The only way that they can determine how many prizes are won and how frequently is by placement of the prizes in relation to each other, as well as the level of gravel that is in the machine, because the claw can only go down so far, and you absolutely have to have all three arms of the claw reach under the prize in order to pick it up. As you can see, the size, weight, and shape of the object matters very little in this game. You just have to make sure that it's not buried in the gravel and the claw has good access to all three sides. Well, there you have it. This was a brief introduction to uh, Lucky Crane. I realize that it's probably not as helpful as the previous video since these are fairly outdated, but they're still out there, so hopefully um, you'll find it helpful. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I certainly appreciate all of your comments. Until we meet again, bye.